and welcome back to the most amazing channel on the internet. I'm your host Rebecca Folgate and today we're talking about the top 10 evil people who dodged prison. Before we jump into this list, I just want to ask you guys to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. So, evil people who've dodged prison. Coming in at number 10, we have Amanda Knox. So let's start off with a bit of a question mark here. We don't know if Amanda Knox killed Meredith Kircher or not. If the media are to be believed, Amanda Knox is a murdering seductress who orchestrated the death of her roommate in Perugia, Italy. So she was convicted and found guilty of her murder twice, but also acquitted twice. We presume that she's innocent, but if she isn't, she is one scary lady. Coming into number 9, we have Helmut Orbelander. Helmut Orbelander is a 91 year old Ukrainian who is part of the infamous Einstrasgruppe, aka the Nazi death squad that murdered 23,000 Jews. In World War II, Orbelander was part of the group that occupied the Eastern Territories and caused a lot of death and despair. Somehow, he managed to escape to Canada in the 1950s, where he's lived in the capital, Ottawa, ever since. Orbelander has been stripped of his Canadian citizenship on several occasions, but he keeps on appealing deportation. Coming into number 8, we have the mysterious Bible John. Nobody knows the identity of Bible John, just that he was or is a serial killer in Scotland in the 60s who never got caught. The man met three women on separate occasions at the Barrowland Ballroom in Glasgow. Witnesses from the evenings of the killing point to a man who called himself John. He was said to be well dressed and well versed in the Bible. Descriptions of him say that he was tall and slim with red hair, but once again, he was never caught. Coming into number 7, we have Richard H. Richards the Fourth. Richards is a wealthy heir to the DuPont family, the owners of a global science company. Wealthy, sure, but also a paedophile and a rapist. In 2009, Richards was convicted of raping his toddler daughter, but he didn't get any prison time because a judge said that he wouldn't fare well behind bars. Um, that's a terrible excuse. I mean, his daughter didn't exactly fare well in his custody. Next up, this woman did spend a small amount of time in prison, but dodged a life sentence. We have Mayuki Ishikawa. She got four years for killing over 100 babies. We've got details coming in at number six. Ishikawa is arguably one of the most prolific Japanese serial killers of all time. Working as a midwife between 1944 and 1948, she killed between 85 to 169 babies. The reason that she killed the babies was because she believed that they wouldn't have good and wealthy upbringings. Again, it's really not her call to make. She thought it was better for the children to die than to be raised in poverty. Sometimes she even charged desperate parents to kill their children for them. She was arrested and jailed for just four years. After that, she walked completely free. Another Japanese killer at number 5, we have Issy Sagawa. Sagawa is a Japanese cannibal who famously killed a Dutch woman called Renee Hartvelt in 1981. Born to wealthy parents, Sagawa moved from Tokyo to Paris. Despite trying to cannibalize a woman in Tokyo, he was allowed to move to France, where he shot, killed, and raped 25 year old Hartvelt. He raped her dead body and ate it over two days. Sagawa said, The moment I saw the meat, I tore off a chunk with my fingers and threw it into my mouth. It was a truly historic historic moment for me. He admitted his crime, but he was not sent to jail. Instead, he spent just two years in a mental institution. Coming into number 4, we have Delphine LaLaurie. LaLaurie was a New Orleans socialite and murderer in the 18th and early 19th century. The highborn woman married three times and was known to keep slaves. Whilst that wasn't cause for outrage in the southern American states at the time, her treatment of said slaves was. After a fire at her home in 1834, rescuers found numerous black slaves kept bound, chained, or in cages. La Laurie was rightfully run out of town, but she escaped to France where she continued to live a life of luxury, not in jail where she absolutely belonged. We have an unknown face at number 3, the Zodiac Killer. Arguably the most high profile murderer in America, the Zodiac Killer has never been caught. Yeah, there are a few pencil sketches of the guy, but nobody knows who the prolific San Francisco based killer is, or was if they're still alive. In the 60s, the killer taunted police by sending in letters. They claim to have killed 37 people, although 5 have been confirmed as official Zodiac murders. The killing stopped around 1970, so we don't know what happened. Ugh, we have another 
Nazi at number 2 we have Heinrich Müller. Müller was the chief of the Gestapo, Hitler's secret police. Not only was he instrumental in many local killings in Germany, he was also involved in the planning and execution of the Holocaust. Müller is the highest ranking Nazi to have escaped death or imprisonment. He was last seen at Hitler's Führerbunker in Berlin, but it is thought that he didn't stay there to the bitter end. After Hitler killed himself, Müller disappeared. It is thought that he either escaped to South America or was given a new identity in America or Russia. It's really hard to rank Nazis as a lot of them were basically blanket evil, but I've put this Nazi at number one because not only was he a killer, he was very, very depraved and really, really, really enjoyed these killings. We have Josef Mengele. Outranked by Müller, but ranker than them all, Mengele was in charge of human experiments in Auschwitz. He was famous for his twin experiments and tests to define gypsy blood. Mengele would remove spinal taps without anesthesia, gouge out eyes, and sew some people together, trying to get them to function as one. Basically, he kind of invented the actual human centipede, and he is a sick, sick man. He's a sick, sick man that never saw the inside of a jail either. After the war, he became a fugitive and fled Auschwitz, assuming a fake identity. He worked as a farmhand in Germany until 1949 when he fled to Argentina. Now, he did drown in an accident in 1979. So karma did get him in the end, but like not enough karma. More karma for him. Ugh. So guys, that was a really sad list. That was the top 10 evil people who escaped jail. What do you think to this list? Let me know in the comments section down below. Also, if you've got any suggestions for future top 10s, please do let me know. I'm your host, Rebecca Felgate. If you like this video, make sure you give it a good thumbs up, share it with a friend, and stay subscribed for more most amazing lists. Bye! <laughs>